Well, good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer. Today, as you can see, uh, Lola has decided to join me. Today, the church remembers the apostles, Philip and James, and that will be reflected later on in our prayers. You know, it's really good to have so many of you joining me daily for prayer, especially our friends from St Mary's and St James, who I'm told are finding it a real comfort and a help. So may God continue to bless you and please know that I am really missing worshipping with you in our churches. As I've said so often from the pulpits of our church, I believe that God is still in the business of performing miracles, transforming lives and that he still speaks to us, guiding and revealing his heart to us. What I've been hearing from many in the wider church and feeling very much myself in these peculiar days is that God is offering to us an invitation to reach into the deep places of his spirit and to commune with him in a way and on a level that we haven't done before. We know that God isn't the author of this horrible virus, but as we've recently read in Genesis in the story of Joseph, what often is intended for our evil amongst us, God uses for our good. I said on Wednesday that sometimes we can get out of focus in the way that we see and understand things because we're not looking at them in the right way. And this time can be, and I believe is, a time that the Lord is using to realign us to the ways of his spirit. In the Psalms we read, deep calls to deep, oh that I would share my thoughts with you today. When our hearts call out to God's heart, something wonderful happens. And I can't stress how important I think it is that we use this time to draw closer to the Lord Jesus. I know that it's not always easy, that things can often get in the way of us spending time with God. But if not now, when we have this spare time, albeit thrust upon us, then when? To stay in God's presence is like swimming in the vastness of the sea, always immense, often amazing, and at times frightening but we are being offered an invitation to draw closer than ever before. And so I wonder whether or not you will accept. I hope that you will. I don't know what the world is going to look like when this is over, but I do think that it will be different, and so maybe we are being prepared for something new. So please use this short time that we have each day as a simple guide into your own time with God asking him to call into your deep place so that you may experience maybe for the first time or afresh how deep God's love for you is and the plans and the purposes that he has for your life. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me It is so high that I cannot attain it. For where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shale, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and settle on the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as the day, 
for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance, and in your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to try and count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end and I am still with you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, beginning at verse 10. Hear my child, and accept my words that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you, you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on, for they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. Today's canticle is called A Song of the Spirit. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bringing my reward with me, to give to everyone according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for all the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David. I am the bright and morning star. Come, say the Spirit and the Bride. Come, let each hear a reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. Our second reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven around by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, cannot expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let the believer who is lowly boast in being raised up, and rich in being brought low, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat, and withers the field. Its flower falls, and its beauty perishes. It is the same with the rich. In the midst of a busy life they will wither away. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation, such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him.
we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, you are worthy of our love, our respect, our honour and our praise. You are our strong tower, our deliverer, our refuge and our strength. Lord, we pray that we would be taken into a deeper, more meaningful relationship with you, where we will grow in faith and hear your still small voice within our souls. Father, help us to be attentive to your call, so that we will be caused to walk in your righteousness. Take us to new levels with you, for we want to know you more than we do now. Help us, Lord, to comprehend the measure of your love for us, to grasp your ways, and to walk securely in them, even in this valley of darkness that threatens us. Guide us into your truth, exposing those things within us that are harmful and discovering for maybe the first time what it means to walk in true freedom. Allow your word to be a beacon of light to us, encouraging us, challenging us, and even at times rebuking us so that we might become more like Jesus. Call to us, Lord, from the deep places of your spirit into the depths of our hearts. Lay upon us the burden of your Holy Spirit to pray for those who are lost, broken, unwell and fearful. Give us hearts of compassion for those that we might naturally shy away from and fill us with the power of your Son to minister to the needs of all those who cross our paths. We pray especially today for Joe Wisdom, Bill Jackson, Tim Crump, Lindsay Tully, Virginia Parrott, Anne Clifford, Fred and Margaret Irvin, and Ben Clark, who has contracted the virus. Lord, bless your servants. Heal them and bring them your peace this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, wherever we are this morning, come upon us afresh and draw us into the presence of God that we might know him as he truly knows us. As the world continues to look for vaccines and ways to supply all that is needed in this frail economy, grant us and those who lead us your grace so that we, our communities, country and the world may emerge from this new and better people, kinder, fairer, and with our eyes open to cherish all that you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so the collect for Philip and James the Apostles. 
Almighty Father, whom truly to know you is eternal life. Teach us to know your Son, Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth and the life, that we may follow the steps of your holy apostles, Philip and James, and walk steadfastly in the way that leads to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to close by reading you another portion from Colin Urquhart's book, My Dear Child. My dear child, I know how many hairs you have on your head. If such a minor detail is known to me, don't you think that more important things about you interest me? You've often thought that I'm not concerned about the small details because I'm so busy looking after everybody else. When my spirit comes to dwell in one of my children, every thought, problem or need is of personal concern to me. That is why you can ask me for anything in the name of Jesus and I will give it to you. It doesn't have to be a big need, but any little thing that worries you. Some people ridicule those who learn to trust me for the little things. They suggest I couldn't be concerned with petty matters, but they are wrong. My love for you is such that I don't regard anything as petty. If you regard something as important enough to pray about, I regard it as important enough to answer. Some don't receive because they don't ask. They could receive so much more from me if they only trusted me for small matters. Don't listen to those who laugh at you because of the way you depend upon me. I love you. I love to do things for you. And I won't allow you to be idle. I won't do for you what you are supposed to do for yourself. I am teaching you to be a responsible disciple. You and I have a love relationship. Just as you love doing things for me, so I love doing things for you. It has taken a while for you to appreciate this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And Lola said, have a good day. Bye bye.